So we love coming to Velocity, right? It's like great to be lost in a sea of best practices. Everybody in this audience um, believes in unit tests. You believe in load testing, load balancing, continuous integration, all, all the good stuff. You're either doing it or you feel genuinely guilty that you're not doing it. So there's nothing really I could tell you about technology or tooling. Um, and well, automation is key. DevOps is more than just automation. So one of the things that we've been very fortunate at PagerDuty is we've gotten to talk to thousands of the world's best ops teams, best dev teams, best DevOps teams, and more than a handful uh, of teams that are genuinely struggling. And so we've really gotten a chance to look at a lot of the people uh, aspects of uh, the opportunities and the challenges facing teams. And so one of the things we did to quantify those challenges is we sent out a survey. And we, you know, we did all the basic stuff. We sent it to people in various uh, job titles, in companies in various verticals, in various sizes. And we got a couple of hundred responses. And one of the things that, that jumped out is despite the fact that uh, 100%, effectively 100% of companies lose money due to downtime, we were finding that 85% of companies were honest and they said that they have missed a critical alert or they've been unaware of an outage affecting their, their infrastructure. And the good news for this room is that by and large DevOps teams performed much uh, better. And this is teams that self-identify as DevOps, whatever that means to them. We were finding that their, their missed alerts were far lower. Uh, there were about two-thirds of teams that were willing to admit that they had missed some kind of uh, essential notification about their, their system. They were responding faster, um, typically within half an hour, often within minutes. And while stakeholders are never happy during an outage, we were finding that DevOps teams um, had less unhappy stakeholders. But, and now, now the scary slide, we were finding that the average team was, find, was getting information from at least six monitoring tools, right? And this means a lot of the tools from uh, the vendors on the exhibition floor today. This means custom tools. This means legacy tools, tools in the middle of a migration. And only a quarter of them were willing to say that they were confident that they were doing some kind of aggregation. And then here's my scariest statistic. Of the teams that are trying to migrate from ops to DevOps, about 80% of them were failing, uh, felt they were failing in some significant way. And so we, we took a step back and we were, we were wondering, why is this, right? It doesn't make sense. DevOps just seems like such a natural outcome in the sense of the only uh, infrastructure, the only uh, place you make any money is production, right? And the only thing that makes you any more money typically is more functionality that looks a lot more like more code. So you would expect that dev and ops would be working hand in glove and that everybody would be you know, paddling the boat in the same direction. And we find that's not often the case. And so the number one thing we were finding that you didn't see, right? There's a lot of words on this slide, but the one that I want to highlight is empathy, right? As a developer, until you've truly been woken up at three in the morning, putting out a fire that's not your fault in code that you didn't write, that's not documented, that doesn't have tests, where you're losing money and a stakeholder is yelling at you, you don't truly understand why there's so much process, why there's so much hesitation to just let you upload your PHP script onto the server and test in production. It's fun, but it's, it's scary when it doesn't work and it doesn't work. Um, and so one of the things that everybody in this audience knows to do is you build resilient systems, right? Nothing has 100% uptime no matter what you tell yourself. So you set a target. Let's say your target is uh, it fails one in a million times, and your, your uptime is really the function of your subsystem. So you've got one system that fails one in a thousand times. Well, to hit a million, one in a million, you're going to need to duplicate that. You're going to need to have an independent backup that fails one in a thousand times, one in a thousand times, one in a thousand, one in a million. But you need to do the same thing with people. Like, we genuinely believe that a person cannot be on call for a service, no matter how good, right? A policy cannot be on call for a service. You, you put something in the wiki that says you must reply in five minutes, that's great. Your wiki can't actually get up and do anything. So what you need to do is look at your team, right? Let's say the average person in your team misses an alert one in a hundred times, right? They sleep through it, they're out of service. That's, that's actually a pretty good number. But again, to get to that one in a million, you need to have three levels in your escalation policy so that the, the secondary and the tertiary who are called far less frequently but they, they miss their alerts one in 100 times as well. 100 times 100 times 100. You're back to that magic one in a million number that I've just arbitrarily picked for you. The other thing is I like doing, I like working at two in the afternoon with a coffee in my hand and you know, two monitors set up and I know what's going on and it's my code. But that's not when stuff breaks. Stuff breaks when you're not prepared and you don't know what's going on and it's not your code. So you want to not only aggregate your alerts so that you know what business system is affected, how bad it is, and what underlying systems are probably causing it, but you want to provide as much situational awareness as you can. And one tip that we've been telling people is when you're doing your code reviews, and everyone in this room is doing code reviews, 
is you need to look at this and say, okay, imagine that somebody who has never seen this code before is woken, or this infrastructure change, is woken up, what broke, and then put the test in place to solve that so that when they get the alert, they know what else is going on. So in the end, DevOps does make you stronger, with strong proponents, but really start with your people, look at your process, and then finally look at your tools. And while we're talking about tools, there's one tool I have to recommend. It's called PagerDuty. We're easy to find on the expo floor. Come talk to us. We'd love to hear what you're up to. Thanks.